So it's very probably that you have heard the word Linux and most of you might be thinking that, okay, this is something for just uh, uh, technical geeks, for some IT people working with some servers, hacking and coding and whatever, but it's definitely not for the average Joe, for someone who just lived his life and might not be so much close to the IT stuff. But here's the truth, even if you have not noticed that, Linux is actually everywhere. It's in your phone, it's in your smart TV, it's in your smart washing machine, refrigerator, some router from which you are getting the internet. It's even in the rockets that are flying to the space. So it's hard to avoid Linux at all because indeed it is actually in many, many different things we're using daily, even without knowing that. And that is the small topic of today. I just want to talk about how Linux actually powers the world without being in the spot of everybody seeing and noticing it, but still being behind of some very important systems that we use from day to day. And the first question might be what a Linux exactly is. And in a simple words, Linux is open source operating system core, which essentially manages the core part of our operating system like memory, hardware and everything else that we usually think about when we talk about computers and servers. And the Linux is not entirely an operating system itself, but with all sort of different tools around the Linux kernel, it becomes Ubuntu or Debian or Alma Linux or CentOS and any other distributions that we have heard before. So what are those very common things online and, and physically at our home where actually there is Linux involved and Linux behind all of the logic underneath? the device or, or application itself. And first thing first is definitely the web servers. Did you know that 96% of all of the web servers like YouTube, CNN, routers, whatever, all the websites that you usually visit during the day, they're actually running on a Linux. It's not a Windows servers. It's not some standalone Windows 10 or 11 or whatever computer running this web page. Underneath all of those websites, we have Linux servers that are just operating and serving you this website. Cloud infrastructure, like if we talk about uh, Oracle Cloud, OCA and AWS and Azure and Google Cloud, all of them offer all sort of different microservices and services that people use to build their own solutions, their own applications, and maybe even serve some web pages. And the thing is that all of them are actually running behind the Linux, if you did not know that. Even virtual machines, of course, you still have a choice. You might create a virtual machine that will be based on a Windows, but majority of the virtual machines that are created on-prem on some Oracle box, as example, or online in AWS or Azure are still Linux flavor virtual machine. And talking about the mobile phones, like all of us use them, right? And if we specifically talk about the Android, the system itself, the operating system is actually based on the Linux. So again, if you're holding your Samsung mobile phone, it is actually Linux. And without you even possibly knowing that you are operating with some device that is running on a Linux, even like my Garmin watch is also based on the Linux operating system. So that's that. All of the smart devices like TVs, routers, printers, thermostats, uh, cars, some smart sensors that you might use for your home, like smart appliances and so on, all of them run some embedded version of the Linux. Definitely not Windows. And have you heard about such term as uh, supercomputers? So the fact is that top 500 supercomputers available in the world all of them are running Linux as an operating system just because it's open source, fast, reliable, secure, which makes it perfect for science and all sort of different experiments. And how do you think what actually powers your cars? Nowadays, we have those uh, pretty smart displays, right? Like Tesla, it's basically a computer within the car. Even some older models like BMW, all those... Uh, uh, units that uh, allow you to set up some navigation or control some stuff within the car or maybe choose a context who you want to call all of that actually in the background is also running on the Linux and I'm not going to even go deep on some um, servers and tools like DevOps, CI, CD, all of the um, services that you are using all of them are also, well, I'm not going to say all of them because just because I don't know all of the services, but definitely the majority of them are still running on a Linux. So why is it the thing that Linux is so popular worldwide, even without many people noting that? 
And I guess the most major feature is because it's free and open source. So you don't need to worry about how much you need to pay for licenses or any other expenses for the operating system itself. Like it is with a Windows, you just grab an open source software, open source distribution. And with the fact that it is open source, it means that you can also adjust it based on your needs. Maybe your hardware requires some specific tuning of this operating system. So you can freely do that without any responsibility to some vendors or licensing or whatever else you are like the owner of this system you can adjust it as a way in a way as you need and use it further on it's important to mention that it's also very customizable customizable and uh, lightweight so if you're using it in some small systems like mobile phone as example where where some smart units at your home you can strip down everything that is not needed for you for this application for this device and leave only the parts that are really needed so that in the end your operating system is super small super lightweight and you can use it in all of the devices that you wanted to use stability and security of course it's important and linux is known for running for years without a crashing or need some restart or something like that so this makes it a favorite system for those who care about stability of the service and let's be honest most of the companies or, or people or responsible people who are building something for someone will always care about a stability and finally the community right that's like a core thing behind the open source so developers around the world contribute to the linux and its ecosystem so you're not alone if something happens you can always find some helpful hand who will probably found the same issue you might have and very likely they will also have a solution for that ready so what does it really make for you and the main thing that i wanted to say here is if you don't know how to use linux you definitely should start learning that because even if we're not talking about some stuff doing at home if we talk about the work like if you're planning to dig into it and you want to become some system administrator or, or some devops engineer or whatever there are definitely companies where like windows is needed but i believe it's going to be very difficult to find a company which doesn't have linux flavor at all so as a linux system engineer or administrator or just someone who knows how to work around with linux you will be quite demanded and i believe it's going to be very easy for you to find a job nowadays the good news you can also learn pretty much for free as i mentioned the linux itself it's open source free and, and anyone can download it anyone can install it in the clouds in their local virtual machine even in wsl like i have my previous videos on how you can set up all the linux in wsl which means that you can have which means that you can have a free access to all of the learning. You can learn everything yourself. You don't need to buy some licenses. You don't need to buy some sets for the learning. Everything is available, accessible for free for you. So you can just download, set it up, go and try to play it out. And as I said, the community is huge. So if you're struggling with something, it's 100%. Actually, I believe it's 100% that you will be able to find answers to your questions online with just some couple of searches in the google so now you know linux might be very invisible for most of the people but reality is that it's almost everywhere you look at and well nowadays and even some years before and definitely years uh, ahead people will talk about the privacy about not liking so much what is happening with windows windows 10 windows 11 and it's not so far away for windows 12 all of the ai stuff when operating systems use your data and your input into the system to train ai model and possibly use your data so the privacy is a big concern for many and you don't really need to worry about that with a linux and linux not necessarily is just a black screen operating system for some hardware it can also be pretty much streamlined an operating system for a daily user who just wants to watch some movies browse the internet open some i don't know write some text or, or whatever or a messaging application or something all of that is also available in the linux so if you want to try it out, just go ahead. There is plenty of different tutorials, plenty of information. Everything is for free. So the only thing that you need to do is just start. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. See you later in the next videos. Don't forget to subscribe and bye bye.